And across campus, a collaboration between a professor at the FSU College of Medicine and a professor at the FAMU FSU College of Engineering is producing some promising results that could take their research to the marketplace. FSU Headlines reporter Mark Vaughn shows us how FSU helps bridge the gap. On the garden level of Florida State University's College of Medicine Research Building, you can find Professor of Biomedical Science and researcher Judy Delp. Well, I have a big interest in knowing how regular exercise retards aging effects in the microcirculation. On many occasions, she spends her time with colleagues like FAMU FSU College of Engineering adjunct professor Emily Pritchard. They're working on a new medical device to help patients with peripheral arterial disease. So peripheral artery disease is um, atherosclerosis in the arteries of the legs. And what that means is you have blockage in arteries of the legs, and those blockages limit flow to the muscles in your legs. And so people that have peripheral artery disease, uh, depending on the severity of it, they may only experience symptoms um, intermittently, but many of them have very predictable pain that occurs when they walk because their muscles are not getting enough blood flow while they're walking. Professor Delp became interested in this disease that affects more than 200 million people worldwide when a postdoctoral student of hers brought up the idea of possible interventions to treat the disease. And that's where the idea for a therapeutic splint took shape. Or where we actually put a splint on and stretch their leg and stretch the muscles in their legs, we have good evidence that that's actually improving blood flow. So we are really hoping, one, that we'll just improve the overall condition of the limbs of these patients, but also that we might be able to get them to a point where they experience less pain while they're walking and therefore they can maybe become more actively involved in an exercise program. The splint has shown a lot of promise, but now it's time to move the research and testing forward, says Emily Pritchard, who's handling the engineering aspect of this project. Dr. Delp had a small clinical study, and um, we are now moving that into hopefully a larger clinical design, and the GAP award has enabled us to make a prototype that we are able to use in these larger studies. So we'd like to monitor better what's happening. We are very excited to see the effects that Judy's demonstrated in the early studies, and now um, by understanding better what's going on, we can help optimize this for patients in the future. As you can imagine, taking basic research and propelling it to the marketplace requires funding. So what we do with the GAP program is we provide resources to help with that transition. It's not enough to go to a venture capitalist and hand them your most recent scientific paper and say, hey, isn't this great? Um, you really have to do some of the preliminary work, some of the preliminary experiments to basically fill that gap, and that's where the term comes from, between the science and everyone being able to see that there's an application. And that's where Florida State's gap program plays a key role. Delp is truly grateful for the GAP program's role in helping to move this project into possible production. We're really hoping to take it beyond um, what we think of as a basic insight into why this might be helping people and into really tailoring it to make it as efficacious as it really can be. So I'm excited to see whether it's really going to move into the realm of helping a lot of people. For FSU Headlines, I'm Mark Vaughn.